This is the Holland Assets Podcast, where we show you how to start and run your own trucking company. Ever wanted to go out on your own? Follow Chris as he goes through the highs and lows of running on his own authority. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Holland Assets Podcast, episode number 164. We are talking today about August 2024 financials, and it should be an interesting one because... Well, I guess if you're listening to this in five years, remember that giant hurricane that came through? It's apparently pretty nuts. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about that. But I'm your host, Craig, over there. He's Chris. How's it going, Chris? Good. How you doing, Craig? You know, I'm all right because I'm safe in the Rocky Mountains, yeah. right? Um, hey, anything going on for you guys? Because I know you deliver a lot to that area of the country, right? Yeah, we do. And and uh, we don't, we, we deliver along the East Coast quite often. But we don't necessarily specifically deliver into Asheville, North Carolina mm. very often. Yeah. But uh, lo and behold, we have a delivery <laughs> that was supposed to deliver this morning in, in Asheville? Asheville, North Carolina. Wow. And uh, it, it's it's insane. I don't know if you've watched the videos, but they had like a dam break. Mm-hmm. They've had mudslides. Like it's it's been super nasty. And anyway, we, we knew this was coming. So we'd contact, I love brokers. We contacted <laughs> the broker. <laughs> um, hey, we've got a truck inbound. I, we know that the power is out across this entire area. Are we going to be able to deliver? And they're like, oh yeah, we deliver. We had somebody deliver there yesterday. It'll be, it'll be fine. So lo and behold, the driver shows up and the mark, the parking lot of the, this facility is completely covered, like underwater, in, not underwater, but mud that's like mm. inches and feet deep. So no trucks can get in and out. And they said they haven't taken a delivery since Friday. Yeah. So the broker's like flat up lying to us. So anyway, to make a long story short, um, you know, we finally got, uh, got, so it's getting reassigned to a place down in Georgia. So he's got to um, move down to Georgia, drop the load there. And, wow. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, let's call this a minor inconvenience in the face of such a major storm. Uh, but it's interesting oh, to hear a little bit about what's going on on yeah, the ground. I, you, you think of all the, you know, all the uh, cause and effects of this storm. I mean, this is just mm. one little tiny thing that's really, I mean, you look at the inconvenience it's caused us, minor in comparison what the residents and the people that live in that area are going through right now. It's like the the videos and the the footage you see, it's like apocalyptic almost. Like it's, it's crazy. So thoughts and prayers are with them. Um, Gosh, I'm yeah, like you said, I'm glad I'm not living in Asheville, North Carolina right now. Two yeah. feet of two feet of rain in like the matter of a couple of days. It, right. I just can't fathom that. That's more than Utah. That that's like one and a half times what Utah gets in a year. Right. It's I apocalyptic, I think is the right word. As you say, thoughts and prayers. Hope everybody who's down there uh listening to us is okay. Um, but regardless, Chris, we've got an episode to do. Because we are here to be an educational diversion for the people, no matter what's happening weather-wise, right? Rain, snow, sleet, or hell, right? (laughs) That's right. So uh, before we do that, of course, I want to remind everybody to go to hollandassetsllc.com for full show notes, especially for these financials episodes, because that's where you're going to get the profit and loss statement, the stuff that you can follow along with and see uh, when you're not driving. Okay, so yeah, when you're done for the night. Go to hollandassetsllc.com. Go to motorcarrierhq.com. Thanks to Motor Carrier for funding this whole hootenanny. And then finally, go to Holland Assets Academy. If you're ready to take that leap into owner-operator status, then invest a little bit, and I genuinely do mean a little bit of money, uh, in these courses. Holland Assets Academy will get you started on the right foot uh, as you jump into the waters of business ownership. Uh, especially trucking business ownership. Okay, Chris, uh, anything else that uh, we want to go over before we do the actual numbers today? Yeah, I actually have a, we've made a few little changes, some things that we're you know trying to do as we constantly try to improve um, the business. And so just a couple things I want to talk a little bit about. the And, and they're both kind of semi-related to financials since that's what we're talking about today. The first one is we've decided, you know, most big fleets run their trucks through a shop um, several times a, you know, a, a, sometimes a month, a year, you know, quite on, on a regular basis. And as a small company, obviously we don't have our own shop. 
but we decided like it would be good for one of us, um, you know, me, Nate or Brad to look at each truck, try to try to see each truck trailer once a month, mm. um, kind of see what's going on with it. Um, do, you know, a, a thorough similar to what you do on a daily pre-check, maybe a little bit more thorough and just kind of record this stuff so that we can better plan out our you know maintenance schedules and, and make sure the tires are getting replaced at the right time. And, and we're still kind of learning what that right time is so that you know, we're having fewer blowouts on mm. the road. Like I was on call this weekend. We had one one tire blowout, just trying to prevent that kind of stuff um, and, and make sure everything's going well in the maintenance program. Then the second thing we decided to do is um, if you've ever you know, purchased the oil or purchased window washer fluid or anything at a truck stop, a gas station or anything like that, you know, they mark up the prices crazy. For for us plebes, right? For for us us, gasoline using, you know, short haul plebes. Yes. So we decided, I I did a little bit of research. It's kind of interesting. So I'm going to kind of go over some of the numbers here. So if you buy, and and I'm not going to say the truck stops because all the truck stops price things about the same, but if you buy essentially a gallon of motor oil at a truck stop, you're going to pay like 26 bucks. If you buy it um, at a, a, not kind of a wholesaler, you know, like a, a, like place. a Sam's club or a... not, not necessarily a Sam's club, but like there's place you could do Walmart or mm. fleet pride. Um, and then there's some local places here in Salt Lake. They're just like more along the mom and pops of, you know, you're, you're not, it's kind of the difference between buying something at a gas station versus buying something at a grocery store. Right. Right. So, um, if you buy it at those places, you're spending more like 15 bucks a gallon. Okay. So 10 or $11 per gallon savings. Um, same thing with antifreeze, you know, at the, the wholesalers, it's more like $15 a gallon for antifreeze versus $22 at a truck stop and washer fluid, six bucks versus just over three bucks. Like, so, you you know, all that stuff kind of adds up and plus it's kind of, it's inconvenient for the driver. Um, you know, making the payment for that's kind of a little bit inconvenient. So we decided to buy just a bunch of that that we store, you know, kind of Nate, Brad and I each keep an inventory of it. And then every time we see the trucks, like whether we're doing an inspection or they're coming through town, we can re help them Just replenish that off. supply. Yeah. Uh, we'll give them, you know, make sure they have a, a gallon of each of those items or one of each or more of each of those items and save ourselves a little bit of money, save them a little bit of convenience. It's, it's a little bit better for everybody. Well, and you know, as you build up, more and more trucks in the fleet, the small differences are going to scale differently, yeah. right? And so if you've got one truck in your, you know, fleet, shall we call it, then, you know, having to stop and go get the motor oil every once in a while, it's probably not that big a deal. Yes, it does affect how many dollars you're going to make that month, but that's that's it. It affects it for that truck. Now you times that by 11 for you guys or 100 for someone else or 10,000. And it's those tiny little optimizations that are going to carry through over the long term. Right? Yeah. Is that fair to say? I, I suspect this is, I mean, it's not huge numbers, but I suspect this is going to save us at least a couple hundred bucks a month. Yeah. Okay. So. And that's, I mean, with the, with what we were talking about last year, where every month seemed like, oh, gosh, what's that red number going to look like this time? Um, This is kind of what you talked about. How do we find those little things that won't hit the bottom line so hard so that when we have a bad month, it's not so bad. And when we have a good month, it's even that much better. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And uh, I like the idea of the daily inspection or sorry, the monthly inspections. Did I ever tell you I was uh, I worked a U-Haul yard for a while? I don't think you did. Yeah, I was the assistant manager of the Provo, Utah U-Haul for like six months. Nice. And uh, anyway, yeah, I remember walking around the yard doing daily inspections. And it's exactly what you're talking about. It it took me 15 minutes and it saved the company untold thousands in potential over the road repairs, right? Yeah. You find that flat tire, you find the, you know, you find that light issue or you know, whatever, the scrape that you gotta take care of before you can send it out, that sort of thing. So uh, I like it. I'm, I'm interested to hear how that affects things 
going forward? Because it sounds like you just implemented that, we right? We did, yeah, just recently. Okay, all right. Well, anything else you want to mention before we dive into numbers? Jump into the numbers. Okay, all right. So August 2024 financials, I kind of referenced last year being the roughest. Uh, this year has been much better so far, but I know that we've been, oh, you know, struggling to get to the level of positive income that you're looking for. So now with that in mind, let's dive into August. How are things looking? How do you want to start this? Uh, definitely better than last August. And we'll kind of talk when we get to the profit um, for the month. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But, uh, you know, it was honestly our best revenue month ever. Oh, really? Yeah. So well, you know what? Good. Let's get to that then. We, oh, we always start with the total miles run uh, with 11 trucks. Uh, well, <laughs> sounds like, well, no, sorry. That was just this week, the hurricane, I was going to say. Somebody was stuck in North Carolina for a day or two. Yep. But uh, were 11 trucks running the whole month, more or 11 less? 11 trucks running the whole month. Plus we had, if you remember, we, we've got a, we kind of started a team driver. Oh, and, that's right. Uh, and they were kind of cranking a little bit harder mm. um, in uh, in August. So we hit a record number of miles. And it's a very even number. Is it really? What 136,000 miles even. Oh, 136,000. Right thousand, yep. And no no sense. No sense. Mm -mm. <laughs> nice round. Easy to remember. Yeah, this really fits into your, uh, your spreadsheet very nicely. Yeah. Okay, so 136. Yeah, that's definitely a good record for 11 trucks. Yep. Deadhead miles of that? Uh, 10,513, which is 7.7%. .7%. That's actually down a little bit from last month. So um, that's good. And then 7.7% average. You know, not great, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> I want a Deadhead Miles t-shirt now, like Holland Assets <laughs> branded, that says it takes miles to make miles. <laughs> there, hey, you know what? You might be onto something there. <laughs> so sometimes those Deadhead Miles are the price you pay. Uh, okay, so the big number then, and I, I mean that literally, total revenue. It was $283,586.73. Okay, so rounding up, call it two eighty four dollars for the month. Yeah. That's that's a huge number. Good number. I, I like the sounds of that. Uh, the rate per mile then must have been decent. It was, it was okay. A um, little bit better than last month. $2.09 $2 a mile. Which <laughs> Two, 200, 209 I, cents. That would be nice. Chris loves uh, counting yeah. his cents. <laughs> um, so $202. God, now I can't stop saying it. $2.09. Um, so not still not where we want to be. Like I, I still want to get over the two twenty five. dollars um, you will see what happens in the fourth quarter. Honestly, like the hurricane might start pushing some of that because it that a, a really big hurricane can have an effect on the trucking mm -hmm. industry because you, now you've got all these supplies and everything that needs to get pushed into that area for recovery. And you know, it, it seems like this hurricane was a pretty big swath of destruction. So, um, it's and. Of course, then we get into, we're being descriptive here, not celebratory. Yeah. Right? It's the reality. It's, like, yeah, it's, the, it's reality the reality on the ground. We're not, uh, we're not out to profit on misery or anything, but uh, sometimes that's just the way the market works, right? Yep. Um, okay. So with all of that being said, then was the number in the black or in the red? Was what are we looking black, at for profit? Uh, but I was expecting better than it was. So it... it Turned out to be five thousand one hundred eighty nine dollars and seventy eight cents. Um, like I said, with a big revenue month, I was expecting a little bit better than that. Mm -hmm. But there were some things on the P and L that that impacted the net profit, and um, we'll we'll talk about that. Okay. Well, you know what? Why don't we dive into that now with the profit and loss statement? And again, people can follow along with this at HollandAssetsLLC.com. Um, I have to imagine that the profit and loss. Uh, statement this month is going to show a significant number of what repairs damages uh, to cut into profit or yeah. to cut it yeah into the, your profitability that much so the one of the big ones was damages we we had to write a ten thousand dollar check for a little minor um, accident that happened you know it's part of trucking sure like that's going to happen none of us are perfect we make mistakes um, but it still it hurts so ten thousand dollars there um, you're, you'll see that on the PL. Uh, another one of the big things is we talk about this, you know, once a quarter roughly. There's a fifth payroll in in a month that's got five Fridays, and that mm -hmm. happened in August. 
So that that in and of itself is about a twenty thousand dollar difference. So, you know, you add those two things, and we'd be talking more like a forty thousand dollar net income, which would be one of the better that ones be we've had in a while. Significant, yeah. So um, those two things were big. Maintenance and repairs. You mentioned that they were a little bit higher than normal, but maybe five thousand. It was about twenty five thousand total. We usually are more like between fifteen and twenty. So let's just call it, you know, five thousand extra there. Um, one of the, one of the bright spots and part of this is just cause revenue was a little bit higher was, um, fuel was only 27.6% of revenue, which mm. it's been a, a little bit since it's been that low. So that's okay. Good. So let, can I back up to the maintenance and repairs then? Cause you're going to have, you know, black swan events, like an accident that, uh, that really cuts into your revenue that month. But when you're talking about maintenance and repairs, that's kind of the point of these monthly inspections, right? Uh, to catch things before people are out and running up higher maintenance bills on the road than they would have at home, right? Right, yeah, like and, tires is a huge one. Okay, yeah, there you go. So do you have a sense of how much you expect to save or how much you hope to save by doing this? Or is this another like, hey, maybe a few hundred bucks a month or is it more like, hey, if we can cut five grand a month off of over the road repairs. I, I don't think it's going to be five grand a month, I, maybe a thousand dollars a month if we mm. can, if we can kind of nail it down really well. And it may take us a while to get to that point, like get to a, a better idea of, okay, at what, like, you know, just talking tread depth, you know, at what tread depth do we start replacing tires instead of just trying to wear them to the thinnest amount that it, it makes sense to replace it rather than like replace it now at home rather than just try to um, right finding that point of diminishing returns yeah. where yeah it's not it's, it's not worth it to get the extra few hundred miles out of it you're, you're almost in, in especially if you're talking like a trailer tire mm. you, you're probably in a lot of situations paying almost double on the road as you would at home especially if you have to have a mobile mechanic go out and make the repair right the then you're then you're in most situations, at least double the cost of the repair. Okay. All right. Well, any other uh, numbers that you want to pull out, highlight, uh, and think about this month? Just one other thing with the, the net income. You know, we talked about $5,000 in the plus. Mm. If you remember correctly, last August was our worst month ever. We were almost a $50,000 negative. Ooh. So if you look at that swing, it's a pretty good swing. So, yeah, I mean... <sighs> It's we talk about this every once in a while. I want to say constantly, but when you've been doing a show for five and a half years, everything feels constant. <laughs> <laughs> but every once in a while, um, we talk about trying to balance the long view of things with that kind of tunnel vision, the here and now stuff. And so, you know, it's uh, there. There are two ways to look at today's number: the five thousand dollar profit. The one way would be to say, you know, gosh, that that ten thousand dollar check all these repairs that really hurt us this was not as good as we wanted it to be that is true also true is when you take that long view and look a year two years back you can kind of breathe a sigh of relief and go well <laughs> at least a, from a long view a long perspective things are trending nicely yeah right and so and both things can be true at once it's sure. uh, both you know, disappointing and, uh, and relieving at the same time. Yep. So, all right, Chris, that was the quickest numbers episode I think we've ever done. And do you yeah. have any, uh, any pearls of wisdom as far as, uh, uh, an impact tip, which we haven't done in months? Uh, you know what? I, I didn't come prepared with an in impact tip. No, I think my wisdom maybe is all run out. <laughs> maybe there's no more left. That's it's, you're the you're Benjamin Benjamin buttoning with the wisdom in your life, right? And the older you get, the more it just wears out. Yeah. It, All right. Well, you know what? I'll see if I can find a. I'll, I'll search the recesses of my mind for a story. So if people want a story, then they can stay after the the credits music, and I'll see what I can do. All right, Chris. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Sounds good. Thanks, Craig. All right, Chris, okay. I got something for you. Hey, let me ask you this, military man, because I, I'm sure you've done training in certain areas, uh, but have you ever been in a like a fist fight, a street fight, kind of bar fight style, knock down, drag out, bare buckle, man, bare, you, bare knuckle? Now you have my attention. Yeah. Um, 
Not since I was a teenager. Okay. But yeah, all right. But you did as a yeah, teenager. Yeah, as a teenager. Okay. So I, I've got a few stories along those lines, and you may or may not be surprised to learn a certain thing about me. Okay. I've almost been in several fights. In fact, one was pretty recently. I Look, I'm 38 years old, and I had a guy challenge me to fight on the street one day. This, I'm like, where are we? Who, <laughs> what year are we is beyond this? this in our life? Aren't we past this point? Yeah, exactly. Like, what is going on? Anyway, but I have a reaction to, like, to that sort of thing. When somebody wants to throw down, guess what I do? Well, you, you want to take a guess? You probably add some humor to the situation i I don't have to they do all the work for me there (laughs) i laugh and i laugh and i laugh because it's so comical okay so i'm walking home from the gym one day which i'm glad that you know people on youtube on your people people on on youtube can only see like chest (laughs) up so that's that's good you can believe that i went to the gym but i come home from the gym i'm tired i'm sweaty and i'm walking through my neighborhood and I, I start walking across the street and this guy in a red pickup truck almost takes me out. This is like across the street from an elementary school, you know, this is like very residential. This is hardly an arterial situation. And he almost takes me out <laughs> and he like stops his truck, opens his door and starts screaming at me. You know, th- like I'm the one who- this is your fault for being in the- For, for being the pedestrian, yeah. right. Okay, so he's screaming at me, and I'm serious, right across the street from a school where kids are out at recess, and he's cussing me out. You've never heard language like this. And it was, well, you have, because, you know, you you work with people like our fine, fine listeners, okay, and the military. So, yeah, and you grew up on a farm. Anyway, so he's cussing me out, and I'm just like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. And he keeps, like, walking toward me and then walking back to his truck and then walking toward me and walking back all the while cussing me out and i just eventually leaned against the fence and said i'm gonna i'll stay here and i I said this out loud to him i'll stay here you come over here don't that's fine do what you want and i'm just laughing my head off at him because he looks like such a jackass and then that reminded me of one of the only quote unquote fights i ever got in when i was a kid when I was like 13, 14 years old and some kid challenged me to fight. We're at this playground, all these other kids like, yeah, fight, fight, fight. And they're cheering us on. And he- Were the elementary school kids at this point doing that? Were they cheering you on and like trying to get, <laughs> egg you two on? Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. I think I was in junior high at the time. But anyway, this kid, he had like four or five inches on me. He was huge. And he takes off his shirt, whips it over his head and like does a whole imagine the volleyball scene from top gun the whole flex <laughs> oh, and goes you still want to fight and i lost my mind i was the funniest thing i'd ever seen and uh he didn't end up beating me up he just put me on the ground and, and shoved bark down my shirt you know which was even funnier and i'm laughing oh, that's funny. anyway so uh the one and only time that anyone has ever taken a punch in a fight that i was involved in was uh, somebody else was defending me to some other kid. <laughs> said, no, Craig, Craig's a good guy. We, we like Craig. He's great. And the other kid was so mad at the one for defending me that he punched him in the face and knocked out a two. <laughs> this one, we were like 18. Ouch. So that's the closest I've ever come to taking a punch was somebody else did it for me. So thanks, Nate. We, I almost had one this weekend. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We, I, you were mountain biking? No, well, that was before. Okay. Um, Saturday, I went to the University of Utah football game with my family. My sister's in town, and her and her husband decided they wanted to go to the U game. So my whole family goes, most of my family. And uh, anyway, my dad decides to stare down. My dad, who just broke his collarbone mountain biking, <laughs> is in a sling decides to stare down the fan sitting behind him that's being uh, according to my dad a little bit too boisterous sure and uh and <laughs> and vocal with it. the swears okay and uh and and that didn't make that guy very happy so the two of them kind of got into a little bit of a jawing match and, sure uh i i, w- I w- thought the two were gonna like throw down at some point and i was gonna have to go defend my dad but it was more like okay dad do i need to separate you two do i need to separate you two kids you come sit over here and i'll go over there <laughs> uh could your dad have taken him no oh okay <laughs> this Not guy, in sling. my dad's very thin and tall and uh, this guy was uh very big thick yeah <laughs> um 
more thick around the waist, but sure. he was younger and um, definitely had more weight on. I, I feel like you're subtweeting me right now, but that's that's fine. No, um, yeah. he was much bigger than you. <laughs> All right, so I want to hear some fight stories. You know, if anybody's made it this far, go uh, hop on Facebook. Uh, or go to Holland Assets LLC yeah, where you can you do the, the comment section. Yeah, I want to hear some good fight stories. Uh, you know, keep it keep it reasonably uh, polite and clean, but I want to hear some good fight stories. So, all right, Chris. I'll see you next time. See you, Craig.